Greetings, I'm Jason, and welcome back to the house of God. Okay, so now that we got the truck, generally speaking, running and driving, uh, it's got still got a few small issues, things that I'm still looking through, but as I said last time, we're going to change everything. Uh, specifically, as it relates to the ECM, the vehicles in that era, uh, I believe it's starting, and don't quote me on this, I'm not a big Ford expert. This is my first, well, my third real jaunt into Fords. I helped uh, and bought a 1988 Ford Thunderbird uh, for my friend John. I call him John Boy. <clears throat> that car's named Athena. His big thing has always been Bill Elliott Thunderbird. So I uh, found him a Thunderbird many years ago. <clears throat> and got that then I helped kind of a bigger kind of hand in helping my brother-in-law get his Ford Mustang Fox body going it's an 82 with 82 81 with a 91 engine in it so I think it's an 82 with a 91 Fox body engine in it I might I might be wrong on the years it's been several it's been several years since I really worked on it um, but we got his car going, and so <clears throat> this is my like, third, but first, serious jaunt in my own direction on Fords. Now, I had originally planned to keep, as I said, her carbureted because in this era, with computers, they were OBD1, uh, they were running what they called EEC4 uh, onboard computers, and... It's not as easy to tune those as it is an OBD2 to some degree, especially as more time has gone by to try to troubleshoot and or uh, upgrade a stock computer. It's gotten to be not as easy as it used to be. So this is where this comes in. As I got from as I got from DIY Auto Tune, an Innovate Wide Band LC2 controller and gauge set. A USB to serial adapter. Now, as most all my friends no and tease me about it. I love old hardware and old computers and whatnot so I keep a serial machine around um, but just for simplicity's sake I got the adapter even though I didn't really need it um, the next thing we got here is a mega squirt it's the MSP PNP2. Yeah, MSP. Oh, I'm so sorry. MSP NP2. So this has the same EEC4 connector on it as the truck does. So this is originally for, I believe, an 86 to 93 Mustang. Uh, but trucks of this era. Specifically the 460s, 302s, and I believe even the 351 Windsors. They have the same pinout on the harness connector. And I talked to their technical support and they said I don't have to repin anything on my connector. And you, with other guys, can take and literally bolt these in and within two hours have their vehicles running. So we're going to go along and start the conversion process for this. Now, there is some things that they include. And I'm going to go over the uh, some of the instructions pretty quick. But they give you a serial adapter, a DB26. And I do know you have to wire in some pins on this and run them to, I believe, the wideband. Um, but this should fit in the stock location for the truck. My only fear is this connector on the back, the serial, and it reminds me of the older joystick connectors. Um, but 
I'm a little worried about that being a clearance issue, but that's something that we'll find out. Also something really quick. We uh, put up some decorations here. Lori loves, as she would say, the spooky season. So we got a, a willow tree up front. We got a jack-o'-lantern. It's October, which is because, I mean, obviously, well. And um, then we've got some hanging ones, some hanging spookies, some lit pumpkins, and then we put spider a spider web on Phoebe. And then we got a bigger web on the truck. We put spiders there, and we put a big spider up on top of the truck. So, yeah. Okay, so my first spot of concern or thought uh, when doing this conversion. So here's the stock ECU. Here's the mega squirt. Now you can see here the stock ECU is just the main connector, nothing on either side. So as like I was saying, you can see here on the front of the mega squirt, you, know, you not only have the connector, but the vacuum reference and this is the serial connection cable for programming it. So anyways, I was, and I'll show you here in the truck in a moment, but the stock computer sets up flush against the firewall. There's a weather gasket that goes on here. With that being said, that means then there's no way to have those connections be where they gotta be and be used if not get crushed. So my thought was, and we'll go and take a look, but my immediate thought is to take, cause it does, it does look like there's enough vacuum essentially to reroute it, but you can just take this one and drill a hole over here and run it through the side and then do the same thing for the vacuum. Now the vacuum is a little bit more tight but you're essentially just making a 90 degree turn, which I don't think should be a problem. ECM tucked back in there. Now, in order to get to this, you've got to take your um, your kick panel off. <sighs> Again, I'm trying to decide the best way to attack this from the point of not having the connectors break and whatnot on this deal. So. On the back side too, uh, you don't have much clearance. So I'm gonna have to experiment with maybe trying to take that bucket out. Now they do sell these extensions for the EC4 connector. They're like 14 inches to three feet now. Uh, I definitely don't need three feet of cable, but I could definitely use a couple inches. Now um, on the whole front of like which way to put it that's what i'm trying to determine on mustangs which what these ecms were built for they take and they mount them on the passenger side and the ecm is completely contained in the vehicle there's not really anywhere any place immediately to put that in here so that's something I'm trying to figure out this is the plate that i was just showing you guys so i was misremembering so the tabs these tabs up here on the top go towards the driver's side kick panel, or rather the outside of the truck. So mounting the connectors on the top of the case of the Mega Squirt, which would be this side, are not gonna work. But, There's the mega squirt in that bracket. And as you can see, that right there, this isn't gonna be so much of a problem because I could just take and cut this piece here out and then it would at least slide all the way back. Now, I'm kind of feeling, I could, I could probably notch the firewall or drill a hole in the firewall to get that through. This on the other hand, I could probably do the same, but, since I can move that one, I definitely think I'm going to attempt to do so. Um, I just gotta find a good place for it. Here's the map 
line right here. And as you see, that's glued on one side and glued on another. Now I talked to the Mega Squirt people and they said, because I asked them if I could cut this line and then re-splice it and make a new one. That way I could pull that connector out. They said not to do that because of rattling and whatnot. That's why this is one continuous line and it's glued. So I'm unfortunately just gonna have to leave it there. That means I'm just gonna have to drill a hole in the firewall. Now this one on the other hand, as you can see, somewhat uglily, um, but going to see what I can do about that maybe in the future. I can get another one of these covers for like $15. So I may experiment with something I can put in this to clean it up or come up with another way to do it. So there's two ways to go about this. So either I could have used tin snips or my rotary grinder and or rather cutoff wheel and went straight down, but I didn't want to leave the back exposed. Um, so I went to this side, which would be this side here, this side here on the rear uh, connector, and I slotted it over some. When I was cutting it, it grabbed and went a little further than I was hoping. Um, but that's all right. I can use, uh, put some tape or something back there and then uh, put some sort of like RTV or sealer or something. I'll come up with something so that it looks better. But I moved that to the rear. So now, so like I said, I'm not super proud of that. Uh, I have to, I just didn't work out as cleanly as I thought. Maybe I should have practiced in some other way first. Um, but I'll come back to that and figure out something else for that later. I realized that I didn't quite explain is those connectors that you're looking at, the nut that you see closest to the camera is actually fixed to the connector. Normally, uh, what you would have is that solid one would be on the back side because it's a bulkhead fitting kind of. Anyways, you would have um, the you'd have that on the back side, and then you'd have the nut that would loosen on the front side, so that you could take it in and out from the inside. But for whatever reason, Mega when Mega Squirt assembled it, they assembled it as such where the tightening and loosening nut was on the inside. Uh, in hindsight, I probably could have gotten a similar nut and put it on the outside, but that's just not something that I was thinking about at the time. So maybe slight modification for future use. Thanks for watching and joining along with us as we continue to build our truck. And as always, the House of Cog wishes you kapla. Till next time.